Hello everybody, welcome back. In this session come exercise, I'm gonna talk about the procedure calls and calling conventions and risks by assembly. This is an important part for uh, any architecture. I have split this into two parts. In part one, I discussed about the jump and link instructions and the execution transfer between assembly caller and callee functions. It's better if you watch part one first, uh, which is shown in the suggested video here, as I'm gonna start with the code, which I arrived in part one. So I'm gonna start with the code uh, from part one. So this is the code which I ended up in part one. So first and foremost, I want to refine this code so that the results are in A0. I'm just using some random values. So, so all debits in Kali and all credits in color. Okay. Second, if we pay attention to this uh, caller function, we never bother to return to the main function from the caller, right? So from the caller, if it has to return to the main function, then we should have something like register x0 and some offset and a register, okay? So we should know which register holds the address of the return function into the main. So if you jump into the unprivileged spec, chapter five, which discusses this uh, calling convention you can see the return address or the this is just a convention okay so the recommended or the convention says the return address is supposed to be stored in rea register and the alias of x1 okay so let's use rea and see what happens So I'm just gonna run up to this line. Stefan. Right, you can see that we are able to get back into the main function. Okay, so now then instead of RA, why I used X3 here in the in part one is I do not want to lose the return address which is stored in RA. Okay. So now if I change my code to RA here. Okay. 
So when it jumps into the caller function, you can see the RA, the return address has this address, which is nothing but F H E. So F H A which is nothing but the address corresponding to the printf, okay, which is right. So when it jumps into the caller function, after executing the uh, some caller function, it should come back to this line, okay, or to this address. So when it jumps inside the caller function, it has address which is right. Now, if I step in further, so here the RA address is overwritten to this address because after Kali, it should jump back to this. Okay. Now, if I try to go back to main function, I wouldn't be because the RA is overwritten. So now to make it uh, work properly, all I need to do is backup the return address register into stack pointer and load it back before jumping into the main function. Okay, so now let's cut back to the calling convention again. If you see the calling convention, it says that the caller is responsible for storing the, or if you see the third column, which says saver, whoever is responsible to save a, a particular register. So for RA, it says if caller. So this calling convention gives a set of rules uh, in which the caller is responsible for set of registers and the callee is responsible for set of registers. So let's see RA, yeah, it's caller and all temporary registers, it's caller responsible. And uh, there is uh, another set of function uh, another set of registers like the frame pointer and uh, A0 to, no, S0 all the way to S11, the callee is responsible to backup and uh, retrieve those uh, register values. So that doesn't mean that uh, caller and callee should always take a, back, uh, take a backup and uh, retrieve the set of registers, whatever is mentioned here, instead they are responsible to backup and retrieve if they modify it. Okay, so let so this ASM caller has to backup this stack pointer because uh, sorry, uh, take a backup of the RA register because it's modifying or using it. Otherwise, if a caller doesn't call the ASM callee function, that means that uh, this is not going to modify the RDA register, hence it don't have to back it up and uh, restore it. So next, let's pay attention to the return values register, so A0 and A1. So just gonna modify this ASM caller function to return something.
so fast is variable should be initialized to zero. And I'm just gonna run this to line. And the uh, value is three. So initialize initial seven minus five, it should be two. I'm sorry. So now the value is two. So the reason is, so when a function is called, the return value is fed by the A0 register as per the calling convention, okay? So now, if you see here, there are a couple of registers uh, that are neither saved by caller and callee. So those are X3, X4, and zero. So, so it's recommended that you are not supposed to use these registers in any of the caller or callee. So lastly, I'm gonna cover the function arguments so the calling convention says that the arguments can be passed through a0 to a7 so eight arguments can be passed through these registers and if you want to pass more arguments then a stack pointer has to be used but that we will not cover in this session or exercise but uh, However, we can try passing two, three arguments and see how it works. Okay. And I should modify the code here. So the first argument would be in A0. So Okay, so the four should be passed in A0 and three should be in A1. So this should give the same result. All right, let's see. So if you see A0, and A1, they hold the values 4 and 3. And at the end, A0 has a result 2. That's why if you see the calling convention, there's an overlap for the return value and the function arguments because A0 is used for both. Okay, so. Now, if you see the variable wow, that has a, a result too. Okay, so I have covered uh, most of the calling convention, but uh, one thing which we might uh, look back is the stack pointer. Okay, especially uh, how the stack pointer has the address, us has some address when it comes into the main okay so all these things we will see in another session thank you